guys! This week I thought I would paint a World War II British desert rat figure for you. Now this is the kind of figure I've been getting a lot of requests for from you guys, just generally things from the desert war, because while I've done a lot of World War II figures, I've largely overlooked that whole theater of operations. And it's not because I have anything against it, it's just because I haven't had the figures really to do it, for the most part. And I say for the most part because I did get this guy some time ago, and he's been sitting in my box now for months, honestly. This is a figure from the Perry Plastics Desert Rat, set in like all Perry figures. He's very well sculpted, very dynamic. He's a good figure. So the reason that I haven't really done anything with him before is he's quite small. He's probably closer to 25 millimeter, really, than 28, and the Perrys did it on purpose. They really just kind of liked that, and they wanted it for this range. But as you know, smaller figures are not as much my cup of tea. I like the bigger, chunkier, heroic figures, and this is not one of them, so I've been avoiding it a little bit. But, you know, it is good to go outside your comfort zone now and then, so I thought I would paint him for you this week anyway. Now, I'm... You're going to probably be able to see here that I haven't done the skin on him yet, and that is because I'm going to try and show you how to paint a more tan sunburned skin that would be appropriate for someone out in the desert. And in general, I'm going to try and get uh, just a figure that looks like he's in a hot climate, gives this effect of heat. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that really kind of at the beginning I did a Napoleonic soldier and I made him kind of try to look cold like he was freezing. Um, I'll link to that in the description box below. But this video I guess is kind of going to be a companion for that video in a lot of ways. And I will admit I've never really tried this before. So uh, hopefully this is going to be an interesting experiment. So I'm going to start out working on the skin here, and I'm just going to base coat it at this point. I'm using beige brown for my base coat. Normally I would use something lighter like uh, brown sand, but as I said, I want this figure to be tanner than usual, so that's why I'm using a darker color. I've also added just a few dollops of Waz Docker Red from Citadel in there, and we're going to be consistently adding red paint into a lot of our colors throughout this process just to warm them up. So there's just a little bit of that in there just to get a slightly warmer color. I'm then going to apply a wash. It's about 50-50 um, uh, Reikland Flesh Shade and Agrax Earth Shade to the model. I've now lightened my flesh tone by taking some of the beige brown um, and mixing in some Iraqi sand. But I didn't mix in too much Iraqi sand because I still want it to be reasonably dark. We don't want to make too stark a transition. We do want it to look tan in the end, so that's why we're keeping it subtle. And of course, I did, again, add some more Wazdaka red to keep that red tone going. The reason that we're doing that here is because um, you know, depending on your skin tone, it's going to get affected differently by um, the sun. So uh, people who are native to North Africa are probably going to have these sort of darker brownish skin tone, and if they go out in the sun, they're just going to get darker and darker brown. But a Northern European, like one of these British soldiers who comes and spends a lot of time in this kind, they are going to, you know, they're going to tan some, but they have a, a sort of, their undertones to most Northern European skin is more on the red side. So it's going to bring out a lot of redness in their skin. You're going to start to see more than normal. And, you know, so th that's why it's really important to start to really put work red into the whole process because it's going to just show up more and you, you're going to want to emphasize that and you're going to see us doing that more and more as this process continues. At this point, I'm just trying to layer this color on. You can see I'm applying it most areas, really only leaving that darkest color to help define sort of lines between the different, you know, areas of the model. Now this step is the same, no matter what kind of skin tone you're painting, you need to define some really dark shadow areas, like between the fingers and under the eyebrows, under the nose, kind of the lips and mouth. And I always use uh, black red for that. It works pretty well no matter what skin tone you're dealing with, except maybe the very darkest ones. But otherwise, th this color is good across the board and it works fine here. So I'm just going back in and kind of carefully fine lining all those areas and, you know, just carefully defining them using this really dark paint. 
Now I'm to continue highlighting the skin uh, and I'm just adding more wacky sand into the mix that I used before. I added, of course, a little bit more red if you feel like it's losing that sort of cast to it, but you'll have to, you know, kind of evaluate that when you do it. Anyway, so I've lightened it just a bit more with the Iraqi sand, and I'm going to start, you know, focusing now more on highlight areas, like, you know, the hands and the tops of the arms, the knees, um, the ears, and then on the face, of course, you want to emphasize things like the nose, the cheeks, especially the tops of the cheekbones, the lips and the chin, all those things are going to get, you know, sort of extra emphasis. Uh, th these colors that we're working with here are relatively light and transparent, so you can also just build them up a bit. If you want to apply a couple layers of the paints, you can kind of get some brighter tones and some more graduation and color just kind of by working them on in that manner. Now this highlight layer is mostly Iraqi sand and Wazdaka red. There's a little bit of the beige brown into darken it slightly, but not a whole lot. So what we've got here is a very, very kind of pink color on the palette. And it is fairly transparent though, because I've got it well thinned down. So I'm gonna start using this now to really give that sort of sunburn look to things. You can see that as I apply that sort of thinly layered over that, it's, it's giving everything a very distinct sort of reddish pink cast, which is, you know, what you wanna see on uh, sort of a Northern European. It's developed as an extensive tan. There's a lot of that sort of red look. And I'm especially gonna, you know, spend a lot of time applying these colors to the face because that's where you're really going to start seeing this weathering and sunburning happening extensively as on those areas. So you can see I'm putting a lot of that sort of red pink on areas like the chin and the ears and the nose and things that would get exposed more to the elements. Now I thought I'd have a little bit of a fun with a bit of a trick. If you kind of look carefully at this figure, you see that he's got goggles around his neck. So he obviously wears goggles some of the time. It makes sense. A lot of times guys wore them in the desert sort of campaign because it helped protect their eyes from the dust and the sand and the bright sun. Uh, but if you've noticed, what happens when you wear something like goggles or glass all the time and you're getting a lot of sun is that you are fit, you're going to get sunburned, but the area that's covered by the goggles or glasses is not. It's going to stay real pale. You're going to get a funny effect. So I'm kind of to try and simulate that on this guy. So what I'm doing here is using um, just normal Iraqi sand without any reds mixed into it. And you can see I'm kind of painting that around his eyes and sort of around his nose, the area the goggles would cover. And then I'm even going to mix in some white to lighten that Iraqi sand and kind of continue highlighting so that I can kind of develop sort of this whitish pale ring kind of around his face. And it looks a little bit ridiculous, but on the other hand, it's actually quite realistic because if you look at, at people who actually go out and do this, it's, you're going to get exactly the same thing happening. So you don't have to do that, but I thought that might be a fun detail to try to apply to this figure. And at the same time, I'm continuing to use that light pink shade, uh, even maybe lightening a little further with some extra white to kind of start, continue emphasizing, adding redness and that sort of extra flush to his face and fingers and any other really exposed areas on his body. To play that red up even further, I'm going to take a really thin down wash here of cardboard crimson from Citadel. I'm going to start applying it to the figure and I'm going to build it up in several layers too. I'm going to mostly put it down in sort of recesses and cracks and again I'm really going to focus on the face because that's the area that gets weathered and red more than anything else but you can really use those washes to even play this whole r red uh, effect up further and you know just put on as many layers as you like and I, at the same time I'm going to continue working on refining that area around the eyes and once the wash is on, you may want to go back in and re-highlight some areas that you feel, you know, lost a little bit of contrast or, you, you know, there's just not enough. You'll have to kind of play it by ear and see what you think is necessary. I also worked a little bit more to blend in that, that light area around his eyes because I felt like it was a little weird looking. I wanted to get a slightly better blend. Again, you're just going to have to you know, see how you want to do. I would definitely consider emphasizing the reds on areas like his, his knees and elbows and nose and mouth, chin area, because they're often areas that just are naturally redder anyway on people. Now I'm going to move on to base coating his uniform. I'm using a color here that's a mixture of brown sand and Iraqi sand. Um, it's quite light. You can see the coverage over the black is not very great. 
you almost certainly have to go in and apply several layers to get enough of a buildup. I'm applying it to his pants and his shirt and also he's got spats or sort of wraps around his legs you're going to want to apply it there and you can also go ahead and base coat his helmet at this point because the helmet even though it's got netting over it the, the basic helmet worn by these desert rats was, is going to be this sort of tan khaki color next i'm going to apply a very thin down agrex or shade wash i've also mixed just a hair of reichlin flesh shade in to make it slightly redder and that's just to continue that whole sort of red tone color sort of scheme that I'm going for with this figure. Now for my first highlight, I'm gonna be taking pure Iraqi sand and I, I've added just a hint again of the Wazdaka red. Not very much, not as much as when I was working with the flesh because I want it to be a little more tender. I just wanna give it an ever so slightly pinky cast. Obviously, I mean, it makes sense for the skin and flesh to take on a redder tone. There's no real logical reason why the clothing would have a red cast, but I'm doing this more for reasons of cohesiveness. I want the, 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 the whole uh, model to feel unified, like there's sort of a unified palette, and I want it to all have these sort of um, consistently warm tones, which is going to be helpful, as I said at the beginning. I want this figure to, to you know, not only be a figure that's in a warm climate, mean, I want to make it just look warm. And one way that you can sort of emphasize and sort of, sort of just underscore the fact that this figure is warm and it's hot is by trying to use as many warm tone colors in the figure as possible. It's like when I painted that cold figure some time ago, I really consistently worked blues into pretty much every single other color on the figure. And we're going to kind of do the similar thing here, but then with red, which is a warm color. So it makes sense. Cool colors, adding a lot of cool colors in makes a, produces a figure that has a colder look to it. And if you put a lot more warm colors into everything, you're going to produce a figure that has a warmer look to him. It's fairly logical. So here I'm just trying to layer the color on here. I'm just carefully uh, applying it to all the areas where I want to highlight and just kind of trying to, you know, leave that base color down in all the folds and creases. This color is pretty light and transparent, so you should be able to go over and build it up on the figure several times before it kind of reaches maximum saturation and you need to move on to the next level. For my next highlight, I mixed a considerable amount of white into that Iraqi sand color that I had. And again, I kept just adding a little bit of red as well, but not as much this time because obviously the lighter your colors get, the more that red is really going to be noticeable and it, it, it can get overpowering really quickly. So with darker colors, you can always add more of that tint and with lighter colors, you always have to add less of a tint. So at this point, uh, I am just proceeding the way I was before. I'm going to uh, layer this color over pretty, mu pretty much all areas of the uniform and I'm going to kind of blend it out. And because this color is even lighter, it's even more transparent, which means, again, you can build it up several times to get lighter and lighter kind of areas. So if you kind of make one pass all over the figure, then you probably want to go back in again and sort of apply second coats, at least in some places where you want real emphasis, like uh, along sort of the tops of arms and sleeves and sort of the fronts of the legs and certainly along the tops of all sharp creases. And you always want to, as you can see, I'm always painting the tops of the creases in the lighter color because that's how the light's going to hit the creases. It's going to strike the top and they're going to look brighter and more highlighted from the top. And then the, the other sort of side that's sort of not facing up is not going to get as light colored, basically. And then I'm going to quickly finish off with one more just final sort of, not edge highlight, but fairly... Um, subtle highlight where I've just added in even more whites. So this is a very, very pale color and I'm going to use this really just on the areas where I want a lot of emphasis on uh, sharp edges and creases and there's a lot of the pockets and sort of front of his shirt. All those areas are going to kind of get an extra kind of thin line of this very light sort of color. So in the end we're going to end up with a very nice light khaki color. 
Uh, this may be exaggerated a little bit relative to what it was in real life, but it's important that we do this in this case particularly because of his skin. If his, if his uniform was too dark, it would look too much like his skin and that would not be attractive. So since he's got this nice dark tan skin, we have to make sure that his uniform is nice and light to contrast with it. And if his skin was a lighter, paler shade, we would have made his uniform much darker. So it's just the bottom line is you want to make sure that there's a clear difference between the two areas. Now I'm just going to really quickly paint his neck scarf. This is not necessarily a standardized military garment. This seems to be something that the soldiers just wore to protect their faces, and they were often just whatever sort of fabric or scarf they could get a hold of. I'm making my red mostly because we want to continue this red theme as much as we can in the model. So I'm base coating it here with black red, and then I'm going to just quickly highlight it using Citadel Mephiston Red followed by Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet just along the highest creases. Next I'm going to quickly base coat his socks, kind of where they stick out over his sort of spats, and also his water um, bottle using brown violet. Um, sometimes they wore socks or a more brown shade or in other colors, but I really wanted to go for this sort of kind of greeny khaki tone or sort of greeny drab shade in this case just because I really wanted to get work another extra color into this model to keep it from being just so consistently kind of khaki tan all over. I'm then going to base coat all of his straps and belts and sort of packing on his um, belts using uh, khaki here. Um, I found that I needed to apply a couple of layers in some places just to get it bright enough, especially when you apply it over um, lighter color areas. It, it doesn't stand out very well, so you really have to build it up for a little bit before it looks right. So I'm just, you know, being a little careful here so that I you know, get a neat result. After I finish base coating that, I'm then going to mix some of the brown violet with some khaki, and I'm going to use that to sort of really quickly highlight the areas of his canteen and socks that are showing uh, just to give it sort of a slightly lighter cast. They're small areas so it shouldn't be difficult. And then you can even finish off with just a pure khaki highlight on those areas just kind of blending it out lightly if you feel like it. On English uniforms a lot of the belt and the strapping and sort of belt pouches were sort of this yellowish shade and I'm going for that here too. So in order to highlight those areas that I just base coat in khaki, I'm going to take some just plain beige and kind of start lightly layering that over top. Again, I have worked a little of the Wazdaka red into it, again because the light color just a teeny tiny bit so it doesn't get overpowering, but I'm going to start just going over all the straps and just building that up. Uh, it takes a several passes to make sure that you really get enough brightness in some areas, but that's just going to be kind of the first highlight on all of these kind of parts of the uniform. I'm then going to add one more kind of extreme highlight to the belts and straps and pouches now by just mixing a little white into that beige color that I already had. And I'm going to really apply that kind of edge highlight just kind of very lightly along uh, the tops of areas and you know emphasizing there's always areas where light is hitting with that sort of lighter shade. Be careful not to apply too much of it. You still want to make sure that there's good definition between the different sort of elements uh, of the you know the webbing and that it doesn't you know blend in too much with the uniform. So there it needs to definitely be sort of a darker line left in between. Now I'm going to really quickly use some German camouflage black brown just to apply a sort of a base coat to some tiny little leather straps and bits kind of like on his spats here for example. Now normally I'm not a big advocate of dry brushing but with his helmet being as fine as it is it's probably the easiest way to paint it. So what I've done here is taken some of the German camouflage black brown I've got a flat dry, uh, dry brushing brush and I'm going to apply some of the paint to it and wipe it almost off and then you can see I'm going to be 
rubbing it over top and getting that so that all of the strapping basically is covered with that brown while sort of that base color is showing through in between. I'm then going to start highlighting the sort of strapping again by dry brushing. First I'm going to take beige brown and I'm going to do it over top and I'm going to be kind of focusing then on the top and the sides and so that you get some areas where more light is hitting are going to be lighter. I'm not going to worry about cleaning the brush too much. I'm just going to go from one color to another so if there's still some of the darker color in the brush that's fine. I'll just sort of blends together. And I'm just going to continue that kind of working up eventually to a pure Iraqi sand, which I'm going to again put on the top. But it's not really going to probably come out as light as Iraqi sand because it's going to mix already with a lot of the darker colors in the brush. So it practically isn't going to end up looking quite that light. Here I'm just really quickly highlighting those little leather straps I base coated earlier. I'm just using some pure beige brown here just to lightly go over them and then I'm going to take a little bit of Iraqi sand and dot that on too. Uh, usually I have a more extensive process for painting leather, but these areas are so teeny tiny that you really don't need to. You can just use, just kind of dab on these pure colors and it's really going to be sufficient. I'm now going to base coat the dark black areas of this model, which are in this case his boots and very importantly his goggles. So at this point it's really just applying some black paint and you know particularly with the goggles just being careful to do a neat job and paint the straps carefully. Now I'm going to highlight the black gray areas. I'm starting out as always with German gray here. You can see I'm applying it to pretty much all areas. I'm just leaving sort of all the seams and dividing lines in the shoes kind of black. And I'm going to do the same thing on the goggles. I'm going to really kind of paint the round front areas in the strap and just there's going to be very little kind of black left. Just defining in between the separate areas. Next I'm going to just lighten the German gray with a little bit of white. So I get a slightly lighter gray. And I'm also going to mix in just a little bit of beige brown, which will make the gray kind of a slightly warmer tone, which is kind of, again, nice fitting with the fact that we want an overall warm tone on this figure. And you can see I'm going to apply that color a little bit more carefully. You know, I see I'm emphasizing the toes of the boots and sort of the soles and just edging around separate pieces in a shoe. And same thing on the goggles. I'm going to sort of emphasize the lighter color towards the tops of those round goggles and sort of just a little bit towards the middle of the back of the strap, just kind of being very subtle. And then finally I'm just going to lighten the color one kind of extra time with some more white to get even lighter gray. Just do the same thing but then a little bit less and that's going to be kind of the final light highlight, at least on the shoes here. Now with the goggles, you can kind of leave them alone because they're so small and badly defined. You don't necessarily really have to uh, try to put glass in them. I kind of did that a little bit in this case by just taking some pure white basically and applying it to the very tops of the goggles along the edge and then sort of blending it downwards. And you know, if it gets too light, you can then always take a slightly darker gray and sort of go up from the bottom and blend the two together. But this way it'll look like light is really catching the top of that glass and really reflecting and it's just a nice looking touch. Now I'm just going to base coat the wooden areas of his machine gun here using chocolate brown. Now I'm going to highlight the wooden areas of the machine gun. First I'm going to mix some khaki into my chocolate brown and I'm going to apply that kind of overall, kind of blending it out. You can see I layer it on thinly and then sort of apply it again, sort of building it up at the top and making it brighter and blending it out. Once that's on, then you can just take some pure khaki and kind of do the same thing along sort of the front edge and blend it kind of out into the dark. And if you want, and I did here, finish off with one final edge highlight, which is going to be a mixture of khaki and Iraqi sand kind of lightly here along the sort of the top edge where the most light is going to be hitting the wood. Now I'm going to be painting all the metal areas here. Um, so what I've done is here mixed some German Grey with a little bit of Vallejo Air gun metal, not too much, and I'm just going to apply that color to all those areas as a base coat. You're also going to want to make sure you paint all of the parts of his bayonet here and bayonet case, which are also going to be sort of this really dark grey metal, at least to start out. 
Then I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more of the gunmetal in to make a slightly lighter color. And I'm gonna use that to very subtly highlight the machine gun. I don't want it to have too many bright, really shiny areas on it. I wanna keep it subtle. So that's why I'm using a really subtle highlight color. And I'm just gonna use it to kind of carefully pick out along the edges of different forms. So we get a kind of a slightly, a nice kind of a bit of shine here and there, but it's not gonna be overpowering. Uh, and of course I'm going to carry that through on the bayonet. I'm then going to grab just some pure gun metal. I'm going to use that just to touch a few areas on the gun. Not much, just like the trigger and the magazine and some areas where I think there would be more handling and wear going on. Now as for the bayonet, you can get a little bit brighter there. So I'm going to apply to certain areas, particularly um, more of the gun metal just to get it shinier. And I'm going to finish off finally with some Vallejo Air Steel, but then only in the bayonet, and I'm going to use that to emphasize some bits of it which were seem to have been made at least out of a slightly shinier metal. Now at this point the figure is essentially done if you want a nice clean figure, but if you want to weather the figure a little bit or make him look like he's dirty like I did, you can kind of go along and do this. I, this is kind of a little bit of a trial and error thing for me. I don't do enough weathering where I'm really, really good at it or consistent. So, you know, I, I kind of messed around. But what I ended up doing, I think, sort of all in all, was I started out with a darker dry brush here of like beige brown which I kind of applied. I'm not applying it to the whole figure. I'm really gonna be applying it mostly to his boots and his um, socks and his you know, spats, his legs, and sort of around the bottoms of his pants and kind of stopping there. I don't want the whole figure to look all mucky. It would just ruin all the work that we did. So after I've got that sort of darkish <clears throat> dry brush on the figure, I'm then gonna move on and apply some washes. I'm gonna mostly be using Agrax Urshe and I'm gonna be applying it fairly heavily on the boots um, on the, uh, you know, on the spats and the socks and everything. And that is mostly just to tone down the dustiness and the sort of the roughness that's introduced by the dry brushing and just kind of smooth things out a little bit here. And it just also helps to add more contrast and emphasis to the separate areas because the dry brushing kind of takes a little bit of that away, honestly. You can also even take some non-oil if you want, but I would use that only on the boots because they're black, they can stand that black um, wash, but the other areas will look strange if you do that. Once I was finished with the wash, I then went back in with a much lighter color like Iraqi sand white, so very, very pale, and I kind of used a very light, light dry brush to get sort of a dusty sand effect of sort of dry dust along, again, over the same areas, but was especially emphasizing the boots and spats and all of that, just kind of, and you don't even have to necessarily dry brush, you can almost even overbrush in some areas. It's kind of up to your judgment. So that was the next thing I did, and, and then I continued kind of fiddling and tweaking it to get the right balance. And then I finished off again with another wash here and there kind of sporadically to get the effect I wanted. You can see I'm also doing some dry brushing and washing on the gun um, and bits of that and it's also his bayonet because I want them to look like they're also a little dirty and dusty looking and you know it's, this is just kind of a this is kind of a mess around process until you're kind of happy with the level of dirt and wear that you've achieved. Okay, so here is the finished desert rat figure, complete with sort of weathering and grime on sort of the lower half of his body. Uh, this figure painted more easily than I expected it to, honestly. I've had so much kind of bad luck with plastics, and particularly these smaller scale plastics, that I had a little bit of trepidation going into this, but I found that actually Paint, the areas were crisp and well defined and it and things went pretty easily I didn't really run into any problems and I was particularly happy with how the skin tone worked out on this figure and largely I was happy with the uniform and the other elements too I'm I think if I had to do anything over again it would be the wash and weathering I'm less happy with how I maybe did that it may I may have gone a little bit overboard with the grime but of course it really depends on the situation yeah these guys definitely were going to be getting in dirty grimy situations no question about it but you know I'm I, it just you know it, it has a lot to do with whether you like the look of a really crisp clean neat looking kind of figure if, or if you like there being some dirt and weathering on them and I, I mean I think it works and I'm just happy that I didn't really apply it to sort of more of the figure 
And I do think that this figure has is pretty successful at looking like he's warm and from a warm climate. And I think a lot of that comes down to, again, the, not the red and the tan and the, the, the skin tone. But I think it, still, just mixing that little bit of red consistently into other colors of the uniform and using the red scarf, and all those little tricks, just they're all, they're all really kind of subtle, small extras, but sort of as part of the whole, they really do kind of contribute to that overall warm, hot feeling for this figure. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like it, please share it, um, let your friends know about it, um, leave me comments with, you know, what you thought, of course, and you can also naturally subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already to keep up with the latest developments. So, that is all for now, and I will see you next time.